Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Did you hear and understand those words, the second stanza of that hymn we just sang? You can look again if you want. Grant me the strength to do with ready heart and willing whatever you command, my calling here fulfilling, that I do what I should while trusting you to bless the outcome for my good, for you must give success. We have a hard time trusting God. Will God really bless the outcome of our daily life to be for our good? Is it really true that God gives us success only from his gracious hand? We have a hard time trusting God, period. Well, why is this? Because our eyes are full of the planks, the logs, the splinters, the specks that are put there by our sinful nature, aren't they? Appearances deceive our clouded eyes. Our mortal eye beholds worldly success, yet spiritual failure. Our mortal eye perceives a spiritually devout person, yet sees a worldly failure. It seems that God is slow to judge the wicked. It seems that way. Slow to condemn the unrepentant. Quick to forgive the unforgivable. Even quicker to bless the unthankful. That the rain falls on the just and the unjust doesn't always seem to give a lot of comfort. We see faithful, lifelong Christians suffering under the crosses and trials of this mortal life, faithful pilgrims struggling while the world rewards the wicked. Our mortal eye beholds the person with the bigger paycheck and the fatter bank account and the bigger home and the nicer car and everything else you can think of, and yet also it sees a person who is spiritually bankrupt, devoid of outward works of any Christian piety, never attending church, never waking up earlier than 11 o'clock on a Sunday, never heard one syllable from a Christian pulpit, not kneeled down one knee at a communion rail. How is that possible? Where is God's justice, God's condemnation? How can God forgive this person, continue to bless him abundantly? Well, our mortal eye it does a good job of seeing the speck in the other person's eye, doesn't it? It sees the speck, but perhaps what it sees is the reflection of the plank or the log that comes out of our own eye. Our problem is, is that we see things in light of our own hypocrisy, and we find the best possible example to hold up against ourselves side by side. But friends, it takes a hypocrite to know one. We sinners by nature seek to justify ourselves. We do so at the expense of the neighbor and at the expense of God's word. We want to judge others by the letter and the spirit of the law of God, but judge ourselves only by the outward letter. So no, we've not skipped the divine service on Sunday, but have we never, ever despised the preaching of God's word that we've heard there? We've never murdered anyone, harmed another person in their body, but have we never ever harbored hatred and resentment in our hearts towards someone else? We've reveled in the mercy shown us by our benevolent Heavenly Father, but have we always, always demonstrated that mercy to our neighbor who needs it? We've prayed, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and how many countless times. But have we always lived up to that? And are we even close to being able to? You know the honest answer to these questions. We fail to follow the letter and the spirit of God's law. And we are quick to forgive ourselves and cut off the erring neighbor 
were zealous to tell God that he's wrong in his wisdom and judgment and discernment, quick to try and stand in God's place in his office. God, you're not judging this person, so I will. You don't appear to be condemning this person, God, so I will. You're forgiving way too much sin, God, so I will not. You're way too generous with the unrighteous God, so I will tighten up. In the meantime, dear God, I thank thee that I am not like these other unrighteous tax collectors over here or this adulterous neighbor over there. We sinners do a good job of justifying ourselves at the expense of others. But in reality, as you've heard today, Jesus would have us know that the plank of sin is in our own eye. We do not see clearly. What our mortal sinful eye sees is not what God's eye sees. It is not what God's eternal wisdom and knowledge knows. It is not what God's perfect plans already have mapped out. We must trust the Heavenly Father to bless the outcome of this life for our good, just as the hymn says, even in the midst of crosses and trials, tribulations, injustice, things that aren't so fair. For only in his Son, Jesus Christ, is there real, true success. Only in the Lord Jesus Christ is the outcome good. Jesus, God's eternal Son, took on our sinful, unmerciful, hypocritical, self-justifying, plank-filled, and self-idolizing flesh, even though he was none of those things. His eyes were clean. His heart was clean. But he bore our sin. He allowed the vengeance of God over our sin and our hypocrisy that was due to all of us to be taken out upon him in our place. Although innocent, he took upon himself our judgment and our condemnation, our cross and our death. It was the ultimate reversal. He who knew no sin became sin for us. He who knew no hypocrisy became the ultimate hypocrite for us. And we who do not know mercy by our nature, we had mercy shown on us. When we did not deserve it, God's forgiveness and the gift of his overflowing good measure of eternal life came bounding down out of the Easter tomb for you and for me. God the Father, in giving over his son Jesus, he judged and condemned his son in order that he might forgive your sins and give you everything he has. And he put it right into your lap, the judgment of not guilty for all sin. He did it simply out of his pure love for you in order that he might be merciful to you and show you just how much he loves you and this world. Now Joseph, many years ago in Egypt, certainly had the faith in his Savior to come. By all human viewpoints, Joseph certainly could have been justified in taking revenge out on his brothers, those brothers who had been so jealous of his amazing technicolor dream coat who sold him into slavery and faked his death to their father, Jacob. But faith in Christ shows mercy to the erring brother. Faith in Christ speaks to the neighbor with words of mercy, even as Christ has shown and spoken his mercy to you. Do not fear, for am I in the place of God, Joseph said. As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. So do not fear. I will provide for you and your little ones. Thus he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. 
If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Joseph understood something else by faith. Being second to Pharaoh in Egypt, nor even being his father's favorite son, was not the be-all, end-all of all things. Being CEO of a company, President of the United States, Bill Gates or Mark Cuban is not the be-all, end-all. Having the biggest home or the most toys does not cut it either. These worldly measures of life are not all that there is, friends. This temporal, earthly life is not the be-all, end-all. It is temporary. God means for this temporal life and its crosses and the trials that work against us. Even a cross and a trial that killed his only begotten son. He means the evil of this world to be for your good. To bring it about that the many, including you and me, should be kept alive for all eternity. In his presence. Heaven is our home. Not here. Joseph knew that. Heaven was his home. By faith in Christ to come, Joseph and his fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and his descendants in the faith, these all died in faith, not having received the things promised, but having seen them and greeted them from afar, says the writer to the Hebrews, and having acknowledged that they were strangers and exiles on earth. For people who speak like that, as Joseph spoke, they make it clear that they are seeking a homeland, that they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. You have been freed of the need to be justified before God, thanks to the gift of the mercy of God in Christ Jesus. And since that is true, Speak as faith in Christ would have you speak, like your father in the faith Joseph did. That by our actions and words we make it clear that we are trusting God for everything good, that we are seeking a better country, the heavenly home, the land of mercy and forgiveness, both for yourself and for your neighbor. That's seeking and looking forward to the heavenly home, while on earth to be merciful as our heavenly father has been merciful, to be quick to forgive, to be generous for the sake of the neighbor, to be quick to encourage the neighbor to come and hear the gospel news, to be quick to be generous for the sake of that gospel being preached, for the sake of faithful missionaries around the world, and to be generous for the daily teaching of the gospel to our young people. By God's forgiveness and mercy in Christ, the plank is removed out of your eye, it is removed, and as you trust in his absolution, in God's baptism, in God's forgiveness given, in his holy meal, in these places, God extends his mercy and forgiveness in Christ to you and through you to the neighbor. And so God removes the speck out of your brother's eye. Believe in the Father's mercy, and your plank is removed. Bestow his mercy, and your neighbor's speck is removed. Believe in mercy, and God is your merciful Father forever, whom you can approach at all times with boldness and confidence as dear children approach their dear Father. Bestow mercy by the power and grace of God working through you as redeemed children to the neighbor and forgiveness and grace will abound in our families, in our neighborhoods, and in our workplaces. Our families and neighbors will be able to approach us at all times with boldness and confidence that we will treat them as our Heavenly Father has treated us. God grant us his grace and his love and his mercy to so fulfill his will for us and for the world that we would bestow his mercy to our neighbor. Even more, when you fail your neighbor, 
Be quick to trust in the eternal mercy and grace and forgiveness of a true and living God who is there to do just that. Turn in faith to the Lord Jesus Christ, who has washed the plank of sin out of your eye in baptism and removes your focus from your neighbor's speck to his spotless and holy righteous body and blood that has been given and shed for the remission of your sins. Be like faithful Joseph to your neighbor and live in the mercy that's been shown you on account of Jesus. And you will see your Lord remove specks and planks, logs, and at the last day when you and your neighbor are raised from the dead, you'll rejoice. And you'll rejoice together. Together with them in everlasting righteousness and holiness and blessedness to feast eternally with Christ. We pray that day to come soon for Jesus' sake. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Guard and keep your hearts and minds in Jesus Christ our Lord.